Hello everyone, my name is Sutton Wolf and welcome back to Memories Dogma Code 1. We just had a relatively large bomb dropped on this last episode. So Mikato here, this shrine maid, Mikato, she has the ability to see briefly into the future. Into the near future. And therefore she can act accordingly to prepare for it. Or maybe to do something about it, whatever. We also found out that Sodano has the ability to read people's thoughts and mind, like thoughts and emotions, which I speculated last episode could be, and probably is the reason that she was missing or killed or whatever, what have you. She could either be killed or she could still be alive somewhere and they faked her death, but regardless, foul play was at hand because of that. Now, apparently there's something that we have to Apparently there's something else that we have to be told by Mikoto, but I don't know what it is. I also want to point out that Reina said that Mikoto and whoever else experienced or were displaying the Paz gene that she and her former team were researching. And like that they were trying to implement into people that made them like that didn't work. Um, that made them resort to killing people. Um that gene is apparently naturally being represented in Mikoto, I guess in Sodano as well, but in like Mikoto for sure is what she said. So that's another interesting side beside this, but we haven't really had much from Reina in this conversation. It's mainly just been Mikoto explaining stuff. So we're gonna keep going here. Hiroki-san, please listen closely to what I'm about to tell you. You have seen with your own eyes the kinds of disturbing events that have been transpiring around you. And those disturbing events... Watch it be because we have some kind of... Watch it be because we have some kind of supernatural effect of, like, misfortune around us. Right now, they are just limited to a few areas, but soon their malice will eat away at the entire world. Soon their malice will eat away at the entire world. I'm not sure... Hmm, I'm not... I need to listen to more, because I'm not entirely sure what to think about that. Does that... Does that have something to do with the JCO? I'm terribly sorry. However, I cannot tell you the specifics. You can't or you won't. Right now, the experiences that you have gone through are all there is. And Mikoto hesitates a little and pauses shortly before continuing. The malice that is currently spreading is a result of Sodano-san's choice. What was that choice? She is chosen. So that's what Mikoto meant. Everything that's happening now is a result of Sodano's choice? What do you mean? Chosen implies a decision made of one's own will, but that is not necessarily always the case. Oh crap, I cut her off. I'm trying to talk a little bit slower, but I still end up finishing before them oftentimes. Sometimes one is forced to make a choice regardless of their own will. She, too, was forced into choosing. One choice was to sacrifice herself and become the trigger to accelerate the spread of this malice. The other was a future where she chose to save herself and delay the spreading of this malice. Both of those sound like a bad thing. In the end, she chose to sacrifice herself. Okay, so there wasn't foul play? Why would she... I mean, it doesn't make sense. She could, she could save herself and delay the problem at the same time. It's obvious the better choice would be... If all you knew was that, then indeed the latter choice might have been the better one. Okay. However, the latter choice has a continuation. She'd be able to save herself and delay the impending problem, but... Hiroki-san, it was a future in which you became a sacrifice instead. Oh, gosh. Why specifically us? What? A future where I'd become the sacrifice? 
So basically, if Sonono would pick the latter choice, I'd be dead right now? It may be hard to imagine, but the reason you are here right now is because of Sonono-san's choice. Ah. I cut her off again. Ugh. I didn't know what to say to that. I could tell instinctively that every word Mikoto's saying is the truth. When I told Sorano-san about the options she had left, she was, of course, quite troubled. So she knew about this. When it was time for her to go, she told me with a smile that she'd think hard about it until it was finally time for her to choose. Those were the last words Sorano-san ever spoke to me. I didn't know. I didn't know a damn thing about Sodano. Hirokun, I think it's better if we don't meet anymore. I can't imagine how much pain and suffering had been behind those words, behind that unreasonable choice she had to make. And I hadn't noticed any of it. I just selfishly felt hurt at those words and selfishly said all those things to hurt her back. Even though I'd been with her for so long, I did something so terrible to Sodano in her last moments. My eyes hurt. I bury my forehead into my right hand and feel its warmth. Hiroki. Hiroki, are you alright? Dana softly puts a hand on my back. This is only speculation, however. Mikoto says timidly as she averts her gaze again. Isn't the reason Sorano-san chose you because she believed in your potential? Potential for what? My potential? Oh god, this game is such a fucking... This game is so deep. Ugh, oh, gosh. That saving your life would mean that you'd be able to bring balance back to the world. She was hoping for the very best future possible. Isn't that too optimistic a choice? The odds are way too low for you to bet your life on this. But even so, it's the kind of choice you would make, Sodano. I've been carefully watching over you. At first, you were nothing but a shell of a man, chasing after the memory of Sodano-san. But now these past few days you have started to act. Struggling as hard as you can to rectify this disturbing state of the world, I can feel the strength of your will now. Yeah, if you think back to the beginning of the game, we were kind of a... Like, I don't want to say we were hopeless, but at the same time, we were really depressed. And we didn't really do much. And now that we've been finding out more and more, we've been trying to figure out what's going on. That is why I chose to come speak to you now. Your will has the power to change this world. I truly believe that. Sodano-san made that choice because she believed in you. So please do not let that sacrifice go to waste. Mikoto bows deeply to me. It's almost time. There are things I must attend to, so I shall take my leave now. Shoot! I keep cutting her off. Let us all do our best. <laughs> this game. This game, man. <sighs> we all leave the room in the cave and head back to the shrine. The cicadas are chirping loudly as I'm trying to remind me my hearing hasn't gone yet. The sun's pretty high in the sky now. With the sun warming up my body, I think about everything Mikoto told me. Sorano chose this future to save my life. Hirokin, I think it's better if we don't meet anymore. Sorano's words repeat in my mind again. I just got angry at her for saying that. I never even spared a thought for how she might have been feeling when she said that. <sighs> just what have I been doing this whole time? I couldn't even realize the meaning behind the words of someone so close to me. I really am pathetic. I mutter out loud without realizing it, and Dana turns to look at me. Didn't Mikoto say it too? Hiroki, your existence is what saved Sorano. 
I just happened to be there with her. And even with that, I wasn't able to understand a single thing about Sorano. <sighs> this is just my opinion. But that's just what you keep telling yourself, isn't it, Hiroki? Huh? I'm almost certain Sorano didn't care if you understood her completely or not, Hiroki. In fact, she must have been happy knowing you decided to stay with her even without knowing everything about her. Yeah, I guess that's a fair point. If you don't believe me, why not talk to Sorano again and ask her? Yeah, we do still have access to Sorano's memories. So we can kind of technically ask her. It's a lot more constructive than standing here worrying about it. Yeah, I guess so. She throws out all that uh, she throws all that out quickly as if she wanted to say that for a long time and then sighs. Dana. Perhaps I'm being too blunt again. But I think you need a little bluntness right now, Hiroki. Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with her. <laughs> What's so funny? Yeah. Nah. She's just thinking that you're absolutely right, Dana. It's just as Dana said. There's no point in trying to guess at what she's thinking. It's far more sensible to just confirm these things directly. I'll ask Soto know herself what she was really thinking. Exactly. Dana's expression softens, as if the tension's been drained from her. I'm sure Dana must have felt overwhelmed and unsure after all the surprising news we just heard, too. Sorry. I'm only ever thinking about myself. Rather, I think you think too little of yourself, Hiroki. It's good that you care so much about others, but you're way too hard on yourself. You think so? Yes, I do. So don't think so little of yourself. Dana's words cheer me up a little. These past few days, Dana's constantly been supporting me and keeping me grounded. What are you waiting for? Try contacting Sodano. Yeah, got it. Alright, well I think that's a good point to leave off on, guys. We're going to contact Sodano and find out at least part of the truth, I guess? So... I guess we're going to find that out next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This game has gotten really interesting. Like, now that they're adding all of these abilities and things that people have, and, like, this plot development as to why Sodano's important, we're finding out all of this stuff, and it's making it really deep and interesting. I like it. This game is really mysterious. But, regardless, we're going to continue this on the next episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section down below. I will always read them, and I will always take into account. And, as always, I will see you guys next time for another episode of Memories Dogma Code 1.